Good morning and welcome to worship at St. David's here in West Vancouver. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter and in many churches this is called Good Shepherd Sunday and I know that as Jason was playing you were, uh, or as Ashton was playing, you were following the sheep that were on the screen. So assisting me in worship today is Ashton on piano and cello, Jason's on the camera, Leanne is on the PowerPoint and sound and Tudor is going to be our choir and uh, Lynn lit the uh, Christ candle for us. I'd like to uh, acknowledge that we are on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people and we are grateful of the Squamish, the Musqueam and the tsleil peoples who have cared for this land from its beginning. I am the Reverend Dal McCrindle, minister here at St. David's and I hope you find this worship today meaningful. Good Shepherd Sunday. Join with me in the call to worship. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. God is our shepherd, we lack nothing. God provides us with plenty, leading us to peace-filled places. Our spirits are renewed, especially when we find the right pathways. When danger surrounds us or the way is unclear, God comforts us and leads us to safety. When in danger, God treats us well, providing us with good things. God has been and is with us always and promises eternity. Let us worship God. pray. God, you have led us through all the dangerous and treacherous paths of life. You have gone before and prepared the way. You continue to support and carry us onward from moment to moment. We, your children, the sheep of your flock, join together for worship, praise, and to thank you for your goodness. You offer us hope and show us how to gain peace. You strengthen us to live with justice and equity toward one another. Not only do you call us to love one another, but you love us as a mother or father might love their own children. Help us to be aware of your nearness and to be willing to call upon your name and listen to the word you offer. Send your powerful spirit upon us and transform us into gospel people in the name of Jesus, our Lord, Shepherd, and Savior, in whose name we pray today in Cantonese. 
，我們喺天上嘅父，願人都尊你嘅名為聖，願你嘅國降臨，願你嘅旨意行在地上，如同行在天上。我們日用嘅飲食，今日賜俾我哋，免我哋嘅債，如同我哋免咗別人嘅債。不叫我哋遇見試探，救我哋脱離兇惡，因為國度、權柄、榮耀，全是你的，直到永遠。阿門。In a prayer of confession, God, we confess when presented with choices for the path that lay ahead. Often we have chosen the way that has hurt us, even ourselves. Maybe out of fear or self-interest, we have missed the opportunities to learn and grow, to share or to serve. We have excused ourselves, thinking that we were victims and trapped by others' makings. Often, when making good choices, we have failed to follow through and gotten lost. Forgive us. Amen. My friends, the good news from God is that we are forgiven. We are children of God and loved. There is nothing that can separate us from God. Therefore, rejoice. Let go of bad thoughts or feelings that hold you down and. Keeps you from being the one that God wants you to be. Be assured, God has done this. Amen.
shall be. We'll start with a prayer for illumination. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. The first reading is from the Apostles, Acts 4, verses 5 to 12. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Anas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Hear the witness of the church. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the Gospel, John 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf, wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take, up, take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Hear the witness of the gospel. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, in the stillness while we wait on thee. Hushed our hearts, listen in expectancy. Speak, O blessed Master, in this quiet hour. May we see thy face, Lord. Feel thy touch of power. Amen. 
And as I mentioned, many churches today are celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday. Of those, many, if not most, will read or sing the 23rd Psalm and they'll hear a portion of Jesus the Good Shepherd from chapter 10 of the Gospel of John. As you heard, according to the passage, in herding terms of the first century, Jesus describes himself as a good shepherd. And of course, since the economy of the region depended on herding, all his listeners, whether shepherds or not, would have been able to identify with his image, or at least they understood it. The downside of this metaphor is that we, his listeners, are identified as sheep who tend not to be on the upward side of the, on the intelligence scale. For the most part, sheep are, well, pretty stupid. They're cute, they're cuddly and soft, especially when they're little, but stupid just the same. Sheep, on the whole, are dependent upon their owners and require enormous amount of care. Now, without extending this metaphor too far, at least on the intelligence scale, we do understand many of the points Jesus is making. Like God, Jesus is the shepherd of the people. The Lord is my shepherd. Was written by youthful David about his understanding of God a very long time before God was revealed in Jesus. Any casual observer would know how good and poor shepherds operate. Under a good shepherd, Sheep thrive and flourish. Under a poor one, they struggle and even starve. Good shepherds take their job seriously and do what's expected of them. Hirelings, on the other hand, are simply that, employees who may not always approach their job as earnestly as would the owner of the flock or a family member entrusted with the task. Shepherds, open the pens for the sheep at night so that they be protected and secure. The shepherd leads the flock where they must go so the sheep know the way. They know because they hear the shepherd's voice calling to them. Others may call and call but sheep don't respond because they know who their shepherd is. Many of you who have dogs have experienced this yourselves. Jesus pledges to be this kind of shepherd of the people. Now, sheep take an excessive amount of time and attention, <clears throat> so much so that a shepherd really does have to give up his life and lay it down. Jesus is the one who would not abandon them as had bad leaders before, whom he likens to thieves and bandits. Now, if you were a sheep, what kind of shepherd would you want? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? One just like Jesus. The nation of Israel used the image of sheep and shepherds for centuries to speak about God's care for the people. Ezekiel, the prophet, writes, You shepherds listen, says God. My sheep have been attacked by wild animals that killed and ate them because there was no shepherd. Those shepherds did not find the sheep. They were taking care of themselves and not the sheep. I, the Lord, will take my sheep away from you and never again will you be their shepherds. The crowds listening to Jesus would have known exactly the image that Jesus was referring to and the tradition which he alludes. There have been poor shepherds, but he, Jesus, is committed to shepherding. Even in the face of danger, Jesus says, he will not run away. When danger comes, hirelings save themselves. Good shepherds stay and ward off the danger, even to the point of risking their life. Because every one of those sheep is important. We are important. And the Good Shepherd doesn't protect the sheep because of any economic value. No, the Shepherd knows his sheep. He knows their names. 
Then in a moment of great courage, when challenged by others who were listening, he said, they were not of the flock. They were not prepared to listen to his voice. Now, as we read, their response was to try to arrest and stone him, but Jesus escaped that one. Well, even though we know very little about sheep, we like to hear this story. We like to read the 23rd Psalm. It's comforting and pastoral. We like to hear how Jesus stands up against the dangers of life to protect us. How Jesus will ward off thieves and bandits and how he is the gate to the sheepfold. Jesus is the one who knows us. He's the one who will ensure that we get inside the fold for the night. Thank God we have a good shepherd, a caring shepherd, a diligent and life-risking shepherd. It makes us feel safe, secure, and loved. Then as we're basking in apparent comfort of Jesus tending to our needs, in an overlooked phrase often, Jesus says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Just when we were feeling that we are almost the most important thing possible, the focus of Jesus' shepherding attention, he's off looking for someone else. Just who are the others? The others. Sounds like a science fiction episode on TV. Someone from outer space. The others. The call of Jesus in John's Gospels has led missionaries throughout the centuries to go and preach the Gospel to the four corners of the earth. Through some of those efforts to reach out to the others, persecution, injustice, and hatred have sometimes been the result. Ethnic and religious cleansing wars have been waged. Terrible atrocities have been committed in the name of the Good Shepherd, the Prince of Peace, the Gatekeeper of Safety. Recent studies indicate that newcomers and visitors to a church usually make up their mind within the first 12 minutes of their arrival whether they will ever return to that church again. Those studies also suggest that when a newcomer has arrived, it is a miraculous event which should be honored as such. The typical Canadian household today is a madhouse. Uh, parents are up at 5.30, breakfast prepared on the table for kids by 6. Pick up kids up after school care, off to a meeting, evening activities, fall into bed by 10.30, 11 or 12, next day all over again. Many parents have to hold down one, more than one job just to make ends meet financially and spend much of their waking hours getting their kids to all the opportunities that are designed to keep the children on the straight and narrow, as well as making them well-adjusted citizens. Music lessons, sports, socializing opportunities, extra tutoring so they won't fail, or at least they'll have some chance of getting into the local community college. By the time Sunday rolls around, it's the first day and the last six when they could sleep in. And miraculously, one of them says, out of the blue, let's go to church. Whatever sparked that idea, whatever flash from heaven struck them to consider such a trek is nothing less than a great miracle. These could be some of the others. These are some of the ones that Jesus is calling and sometimes they do in fact hear somehow. Well, how will they be welcomed? Will it feel like they found safety? Have they found a new home, a sheepfold? People hear the Shepherd's voice in a variety of ways. The 23rd Psalm speaks of a valley of the shadow of death. There are many shadowy valleys through which people must travel. None are trivial. 
whether the valley be one of endangered health, a brush with death, a loss of something, job, friendship, family disruption, marriage disillusion, struggling with an addiction, a threat from another. Each of these can be as traumatic and fear-filled as any other. While these new others encounter their terrifying walk through the valley of the shadows, sometimes, sometimes they hear a voice. Maybe it's a still, small voice. Maybe a memory from the past which urges them to venture into a place like this one, to seek the shepherd, to seek safety, to seek comfort, to seek a place that somehow makes life bearable again. Oh, but what about those who don't believe or believe something quite radically different? Didn't Jesus once say there's only one way, his way? Remember? No one comes to the Father but by me. Does this mean that no one can find God unless listening to the voice of the shepherd calling from Galilee? Or does this mean that no one can find God unless nudged by God to seek God? Now if we believe that Jesus is God incarnate, that God speaks as the shepherd through nature, as one's conscience, God may nudge us. No one shall come to me, says God, except by my initiative. Kind of throws a special curve on those who show up one morning and says, let's go to church. Once heard, the sheep have followed. There are others, some will come, some will go elsewhere, but God seeks them too, just the same. We have responded. We've arrived at this place, or at least on this virtual tele television, but we are part of this sheepfold. We know that there are many others, others of the community, others of the future, next generations. As followers of the voice of Jesus, we're called to do no less than good shepherding. Certainly better than hirelings, those whom Jesus condemned for not caring. Little children, writes John, let us love not on word or in speech, but in truth and action. And when we love one another, we know, and others know, that God abides in us by the Spirit the spirit that God gives us. At least that's the way I see it, fellow shepherds, fellow sheep. Last week following the sermon, we repeated the Apostles' Creed. I did mention a new creed that the United Church had produced way back in 1968. And we're now going to read that together. A new creed. We are not, not alone. alone. We live, live in, God's in God's world. world. We, believe we believe in God, God who has created and, and is creating, creating, who has who come in Jesus, Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who, who works in us and others by the Spirit. Spirit. We, we trust in God. We are, we are called to be the church, church to, to celebrate God's presence, presence to live with respect in creation, creation to love and serve others, to, to seek justice, justice and resist evil, evil to, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, and risen our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in, in life beyond death, God is with us. We, we are, are not alone. alone. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Let us pray. Almighty God, shepherd of all people, enable us to be shepherds as well as sheep, apostles as well as disciples, servants as well as seekers. We have stood in the presence of your risen Christ, our Lord. We have felt the closeness and abiding presence of your healing spirit. Reassure us that we are never alone. Help us to see, to hear, to feel, and to understand your ways with us. Our intention is to care for all your sheep and to make room for all within and without the fold. Help us, God of mercy, to put aside any prejudice or resentment toward any brother or sister. Help us to value the gifts which you have bestowed on other people, other cultures, other faiths. You have called us to seek justice and peace. Push us beyond the standard which society sets, that we might adopt your stance for compassion and judicial peace. We pray for the peace movement which transforms the ignorance of apathy. We pray for those who strive through international cooperation that peace might prevail. We pray for those who risk their lives to further understanding and empathy between nations and peoples. We do pray God, for those caught in the midst of racial strife, who have experienced the worst side of human prejudice, for those who feel they have no place in their community or are judged as inferior or a threat because of their race, color, sexuality, or station in life, bring peace and concord where injustice reigns and terror lurks behind the faces of those we should trust. God, in your love, hear this, our prayer. We pray for those who hunger or thirst, who are cold, without places to sleep or places to work, places to learn, places to receive healing. Lord, shepherd of all, help us to shepherd your people and respond with the love you share with us. God, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn and those who suffer depression, illness, or any dysfunction of life. And we name in the silence for your people who need our prayer. God, in your love, hear our prayers. Where we falter, give us strength, God. Where we fail, give us forgiveness. For we ask all these things of Jesus Christ, who prays with us and intercedes for us. Amen. Weary 
steps may falter and my sorrows the fears may be gushing from the rock before me lo a spring of joy i see all the way my savior leads me oh the fullness of his love perfect rest to me is promised in my father's house above when my spirit clothed immortal wings his flight to realms of day this my song through endless ages jesus leads me all the way my friends it's time for us to burst outside to go where god is leading us not fearful of dangers that lurk for god is with us always leading us comforting us showing us the way go now as disciples as apostles yes as sheep and as shepherds into your world go now may the blessing of god the father the son and the holy spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. And, and God will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.